Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of The Inner Changemaker. So excited to be sharing this episode with each and every single one of you because today we're going to do something we haven't really done before. We've mentioned it a few different times, uh, but we're going to be really diving into one niche aspect of building out your legacy as well as your currency. Uh, Today's guest, we have the CEO and Managing Director of Rain which stands for the Real Estate Investment Network. Uh, He is an accomplished speaker, a facilitator, um, and he also hosts the highly acclaimed podcast, The Everyday Millionaire. Um, And he's someone that has made a great impact even through his work um, on my life and my family's life. And over the last two decades, uh, he's been able to teach and present to thousands of real estate investor entrepreneurs across Canada, both live and online. And I have him live with me, but you're probably hearing the recording of this. Uh, so uh, welcome to the show, Mr. Patrick Frenzy. Welcome. Hi, Jay. How are you? Great to be here, by the way. Yeah, well, I'm excited that we've got this on the books. We made this work. Um, so, you know, I, I know you run your podcast. I know you've been on, on, you know, many, many different rounds of this, whether it were you're interviewing or you're being interviewed. Um, and, you know, what, what caught my attention from, you know, your uh, when, when I first met you was that you're running this podcast. It was called The Everyday Millionaire. And I'm just curious, when you kind of put that together, what does the everyday millionaire, what, what does that mean to you? You know, and that's a great question, Jay. When I first came up with the everyday millionaire, it was really me sitting back and looking at where I could have an impact on the world for me, you know, like my view of where I saw things going and what I love to do, my passion around things. And I was actually on the beach in St. Lucia. Okay. And I had... Uh, Can't go wrong there. What, yeah, you can't go wrong. There. So it was, <laughs> I, was, I was kind of I was reading, doing a lot of reading on that particular trip, which I tend to do on vacations anyways. And I had just read the book called Ego is the Enemy. Mm. And I was looking at what I wanted to achieve. And I was looking at where in spite of some of my accomplishments, some of the things that I'd achieved, I realized that I was playing far smaller than I wanted to play. And the realization of ego is interesting only because people look at ego often their framework for it or their reference to it is around arrogance. It's around maybe a little full of themselves. Well, ego is a little bit dark and crooked that way and it sneaks up on you and ego can also keep you small. Ego protects you from being exposed, from being out there. And so that was actually an interesting trigger for me. So that's a little bit of a backstory about the trigger. Then the everyday millionaire came from the realization of how many people I knew that had achieved some really amazing things, just quietly did their stuff. You know, it was like what I use on my show as a, a reference is seemingly ordinary people achieving extraordinary results. Mm. And I was surrounded by people that had done that. You know, the podcasts that were out there, the interviews that, that were out there, they they're interviewing really acclaimed billionaires and sure. stars and athletes. And, and listen, that's awesome. Yeah. But I realized that that's, for most people, unattainable. It's a dream. It's, it's, mm. it, they can't even wrap their mind around what it means to be a billionaire, let alone a millionaire. <laughs> right. So, so I did my research on what it even means to be a true millionaire, which is to have mm. liquidatable assets of a million dollars, not including your principal residence. Mm. And that in Canada, uh, you know, a population of whatever it is, 35 million, let's say in the middle there somewhere, less than 1% of Canadians are actually have a net worth of a million dollars based on those, uh, based on that. And so I realized that when you look at some of the people that I know, I'm often, they're just ordinary people. And gosh, you know, if they can do it, I can do it. You know, it's like that, it's that, as opposed to a Richard Branson, interesting guy. I love the stuff he does, how he writes, how he talks. Yeah. But it's pretty big. Yeah. And he's a great interview. But I wanted to really get into the the weeds, if you will, of just people who, how did they get there? How did they create a net worth of five, seven, three million, ten, twenty, sixty million? <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, and that's, so that was that was the premise for the show. That's how I did it. That's how it came about. I'm really proud of the show. I uh, we've got a great following. I get really great feedback, and uh, so I'm enjoying doing it. I really love it. I mm-hmm. really do. 
Yeah. I mean, it's 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 always um it's always so refreshing actually that that you bring that up because I think sometimes in the world of social media and you and, and you're right, you know, even on this podcast we've been um we've been blessed to have had a few millionaires and billionaires to have come on to the show, but sometimes like they're operating on a different, you know, planet in in the way that they're thinking and it's 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 kind of difficult to kind of get you know that level of mentorship um in, to even be able to apply that you know in in your everyday life so i love the fact that you know you're you, it's almost like you're you're sharing and normalizing the idea of being a millionaire but, but with ordinary people as well um and and highlighting that on your show so, um we're going to focus on this episode around real estate investing just because you know i i really think that you know, Rain does such a great job with their events and the organization that that, that obviously you run. Um, if you could maybe walk us back a little bit, take us back. Um, what was life like before maybe you started looking at real estate investing, before you started thinking about, you know, looking at the different markets and economies, before we even get into any of that stuff of, you know, how one even begins to invest in real estate. Uh, t who were you when, you know, life before real estate investing, what were you thinking? What, what was life like then for, for Patrick? Well, Jay, you know, I've been a entrepreneur slash business owner really most of my life. Yeah. And although I spent, uh, you know, the first early years of my life from, you know, 18 to, you know, 27, 28 years old, I worked in the oil industry and got a lot of corporate training. But what's important about that is, Back in those days, in the you know in the late seventies, early eighties, there you know we were young. We were the boomers. We were those individuals that were coming up. It was that yeah. whole big cohort of individuals, kind of like the millennials of today, I guess. But ultimately, the corporations back then were putting a lot of money and time and energy into training us. So I had a really strong corporate background where my post secondary was done corporately. So I had a very, very strong education in that. Mm -hmm. Now, in I lived in Alberta. I lived in Edmonton specifically. And back in those days, uh, our then Prime Minister Pierre Elliott Trudeau uh, introduced the National Energy Program, mm -hmm. and which shut Alberta down. You know, unemployment went. I think at one point it peaked at about fourteen percent, but it was really you know ten, twelve. And I eventually lost my job in the oil industry. Now. The reason I share that was because that was when my, what I call my entrepreneurial accident occurred. And I went in, met some, uh, a, a good buddy of mine had a business. He was on his own. He's going, I need some help. I don't really, you know, I just need to have some help. So I, I joined him in a business called Professional Skate Service, which is a small boutique retail store. And, you know, just over time, I, within a couple of years, I bought him out and, then I owned the store. We now call them Pro Skate. I've owned the store since 1984, and I still own them to this day. And I'm down to two stores. We've gone into the, the U.S. I branched out, had some stores in the U.S. and uh, in Denver specifically. Uh, then we came back, slowed that whole thing down, kept the two stores. Well, back in about 2001, I've been belt. You know, I've been doing well with the business. To be honest with you, my wife Stephanie and I had both been doing quite well and we were meeting people and here's what I noticed Jay the most successful business people that I knew and that I admired mm -hmm. and that I kind of emulated or tried to emulate what I realized was in spite of how well they were doing in business and many of them were doing exceptionally well in business they all owned real estate they all owned real estate mm -hmm. and I went gosh I gotta look into this real estate thing yeah and you know, back in 2000, I started to do what research I could. You know, we certainly did have the Internet to the degree we do today. Mm. But I actually was reading the newspaper one morning, and I saw this little ad in the newspaper saying, want to learn about Alberta real estate? Yeah. Come to this event. And so I went to an event in 2000. It was a it's similar to what we do now, which is called the win events, which are what's important now in real estate. We call them win events. Mm. And really, it's a primer for us to introduce people to the conversation of real estate and then introduce them to the concept called get an education in real estate and attend an acre event. Back then mm -hmm. they called quick start programs. And that was the acre event, as you know, is the authentic, uh, the authentic Canadian real estate program. So that's how I got started in the world of real estate because it was driven by people that I admired, 
people who had a really great net worth. And that's how I got introduced to Rain. Mm. Wow. That's where I started my journey. Yeah, and 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 you're right. You know, it's um that observation there of people doing really well in business and and all a lot of successful people. That's one thing that not everybody talks about so openly. Um, but real estate is is a huge commonality uh, among people that are building wealth and 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 and, and successful. Um, paint us a picture now. Like, what is life like now? Because now you're, I mean, Rain, you guys are all across, you know, Canada. I was literally, uh, I flew in from Italy the night before because I knew how much impact Acre had on on me and my family's life uh, last year. And I was able to attend this past year in Toronto. Um, what's life like for you now? Um, now that you've, you know, looked at investing uh, for, for a huge chunk and as well as been so successful with so many of your, your different ventures. Well, I think, you know, life now is, it's interesting because I'm, I'm about to turn 60 years old, by the way, uh, in July of this year. So I'm looking at life through a different set of filters, a different set of eyes than I have been over the years. I'm now a grandfather and that's kind of fun and cool and very interesting space to be in. Yeah. For me, you know, when we look at, when we go back to looking at what real estate did for me, I'll start there a little bit, was the realization that any business owner, has to realize that there's going to be an exit at some point. And if you're, depending on where your business is, what is your retirement plan, quote unquote, whatever retirement means for you, but what is your wind down? What's your exit strategy? What's your, where are you going with all of this? And, and I didn't have a pension plan in my business. And so my pension plan became real estate. Now, what's interesting about that is I've had lots of success with real estate. I've had lots of failures in real estate. And what is life like right now? Well, I've got too many businesses going on to be honest with you i'm trying to wind them down it's hard to you know slow down a train and it takes a while to unwind it and you know so for me uh we're really driven by rain you know retirement is not even something that's in my vocabulary to be honest with you in terms mm -hmm. of my thought process and we love doing what we're doing with rain of course we're in calgary vancouver uh, edmonton we're quarterly in ottawa we're in toronto we just started a chapter in Kelowna, british columbia and we're really out to change the real estate world. We launched what we call the REIA program, which is a real estate investment advisor program. That's ours. We're gonna redefine who realtors are, mortgage brokers and investors are in the world of real estate. So that's really cool. So for me right now, it is about continuing to grow my, I guess my prowess as a coach, as a leader, as a CEO of a business, taking this business to the next level, we have big aspirations, my partner, Richard Dolan and I, and recently uh, a new partner that we've taken on, uh, Jean Guy, and we're really focused on taking this business to the next level, changing lives, making an impact on uh, on people's lives in a really powerful way. Don R. Campbell, as you know, is a good friend of mine and, mm -hmm. and is on our stage often. Yes. And, and so, you know, collectively, we're all inspired to do the same thing, which is to have an impact on people's lives. And so from a business point of view, it's interesting because we, you know, we're we like any business, we're going, well, how do we manage costs? What's the sales? All of those things. Yeah. All of our, our, all of our decisions, Jay, come from one fundamental place. We start with the end user, if you will, our mm -hmm. end client. What is most important for us to deliver on for our clients? All decisions come from there. Clients, team first always. Mm. And we make decisions from that place. I think it's, in some regards, it's it's an interesting place to do it. We always feel good about it. Uh, it's not maybe financially the best approach. Uh, you, you can look at some of the businesses that are similar to ours. We've been around 25 years. There's other businesses out there that try and do things, but they're really driven first and foremost to the sale yeah. and then how that lands for the client. So that's not to make anybody wrong. Our model is really an integrity-based service and product that we provide mm -hmm. and we're driven and that's why we have as many you know we have rain members that have been around 20 years 10 years 15 years it's, yeah. it's all about relationship i know many of them i love it yeah yeah and, and you know patrick you, you reminded me of something when when you said um you know you, you don't even think about retirement right and uh, I, it makes me think about or you know it, it wasn't necessarily something that um, it is a word in, in your vocabulary. And, um, you know, I remember one of my first mentors, Dan, Dan Sullivan, 
uh, he made the great analogy. He says, you know, the word retirement. He goes for entrepreneurs. It doesn't. You don't. You don't really need to think about that because if you're building, he goes, you know, you retire. You, you retire like tires. You know, like objects get retired because they're out of use, right? Sure. And and he goes for high performers and leaders and people that are building a, a life you know, that, that they're going after, right? You guys talk about your beliefs and, and chasing that and creating that and defining that. Um, you, you don't retire from that. You know what I mean? No. You're, 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 you're creating systems to, to have greater leverage. Um, and, and so I love, I love that you, you talked about that. Um, for, for, I, I'm curious for you, was there a, a like, was there ever like a moment, um, or uh, like a, a time where you kind of, it's almost like you tapped into the power of, of, of real estate investing. Um, and, and what did that mean for you of like that first moment of understanding, you know, what this could potentially lead to and, and the impact that it can have for the people around you? Well, you know, I think for me personally, you know, real estate's interesting because for me, it's just a way to monetize. It's a way for me to take my capital and put it to work. I'm yeah. not passionate about real estate. You know, there's right. nothing to be for me. There's nothing to be passionate about. Sure. I'm, I'm I'm generally the money partner. I haven't really got into the trenches of real estate in a doing this kind of way for many years. Yeah. Uh, however, having said that, uh, I did I did for a number of years. I grew my own portfolio. I managed some of my own properties. I did all of that. So for me, real estate isn't what drives me. What drives me is the education, is the coaching, is the business of investing in real estate, is supporting mm. others. Because we have many Ray members who actually make a living investing in real estate. They flip yeah. deals, they assign deals, they're realtors, they're mortgage brokers, love supporting that. Then there's others who are firefighters, they're doctors, they're healthcare yeah. workers, they're you know, they're electricians that are building a portfolio for their future. And and that's really what I'm inspired to do is support people in creating a financial future. That's that's what it is for me. So when I got the power of real estate, when I started to understand it was I don't well to be honest with you I don't think I had an appreciation for it even after I, I bought you know I bought my first let's say dozen doors mm. and they were churning away and that was great but until I actually was able to pull some cash off the table yeah I didn't realize I went wow that was cool because yeah. guess what I still own the asset I've got none of my own money in it anymore and I've got more capital to work with yeah so that's when I really got it that, I think so from a turning point of view, it was like, okay, we got to yeah. do more of this. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. That's was, was good. That's was good. Um, that, 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 that's really cool. And, and I know you mentioned, um, you know, you mentioned a few failures uh, along the way, right? And this is not even typically something I would bring up or, or ask. I almost think it's, it's, it's almost too typical of an interview question. But is there any famous kind of like failures or, or kind of funny failures that, that you remember that kind of stand out in your mind? Oh gosh, uh, you know I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> much to too start? serious. I'm much too serious a character to look at a failure as funny. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, you know I, I'm used to failing. Trust me, I've uh, I've made many mistakes. The you know the the thing about real estate that I've learned the hard way is that you got to be really careful about your joint venture partners if that's what you're doing. Mm. Understanding that those are relationships, those are business relationships. I think when I first started getting into joint ventures, and I don't do joint ventures in that way anymore, but having said that, uh, when you first get into joint ventures, you're looking at it as a check. You know, you're going, holy cow, this guy's got 100, 100 grand or a million or whatever the number is. Yeah. And you're looking at just the money without really understanding that it's not just the money, this is a business relationship. Mm. And along the way, you're in this relationship to be easily for five years, seven years, 10 years, 15 years. Well, in that period of time, life happens. People go through divorces. There's yeah. deaths in the family. There's business disruptions that they might have. Well, that will throw a wrench into all sorts of things, mm. a disagreement or a misunderstanding or a, a I guess, a different belief in how a portfolio should be managed. Mm. And all sorts of things can take that kind of joint venture relationship in a different direction. It isn't even a case of somebody doing something to another with any malice. It's just life happens. Yeah. So for me, what I've learned is that for joint ventures, uh, you know, just that recently, we've actually recently did a joint venture, uh, a couple of joint ventures on a, an RTO deal. 
And but I knew I was in and out in three years. And so for me, that made total sense. And mm-hmm. put my money to work. I know the individual who did the RTO deals. He's awesome. And we we hit it out of the park. So from now I'm going in a much more, I guess, much more eyes wide open, much more understanding, having dealt with lots of RAIN members, seeing the paths that they've gone down and understanding some of the mistakes they've made. So that's that's what it is for me. Those are, those are, I call them failures and or mistakes. Listen, they're all lessons, and you got to be prepared to fail. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I think it. that I think that's that's such a it's a beautiful point, right? I mean, um, I don't remember who said it. It's like you're either um, you're either you're either um, successful in what your goal is, or you're either learning how not to do something so that you could be successful down the line. And so many of those lessons, like it's almost like people try to not fail, but if you try to not, like if you try to not fail or avoid failing, you kind of like try to overstep like the lessons and the actual things that's gonna make you successful down the line. Um, so I, I love that you, you brought that to light. Um, for for you having this type of i mean now that you guys do events and and all these things you're educating you know canadians um around real estate investing um how does it kind of make you feel on their end when you have uh people like myself or or individuals like uh, we were at acre and there's so many different people that had all these mini stories of you know taking their families on vacations or being able to retire their 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 you know maybe their parents um like hearing stories like that on on a stage i mean it's 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 quite powerful um how does it feel for from from a managing director from your end you know you guys are presenting you know for so often um to to kind of have that level of impact for people well, there's a, there's a couple of parts to that, you know, for us, and I, I'll speak for me. I won't, I won't speak for my partners, Don and Richard, et cetera. Sure. You know, being, being a contribution is really what drives me. You know, that's where fulfillment lives. That's where making, you know, being a contribution is, and making a difference is what inspires me to get out of bed in the morning. Mm. The, the stories I hear, the successes that people have and, and where I can support them in that. And I'll also keep in mind, I look at people that have, you know, tripped and fallen and maybe had their failures along the way. But ultimately, that's my benchmark. That's my scorecard. How are we doing? The fact that we can do this nationally, the fact that the membership continues and grows, and we're doing all the things. That we, that's really my benchmark of measuring my impact, how successful I'm being. Now, back to what we talked about earlier is that along the way is, you know, my focus is on leadership. You know, we talked a little bit going into this interview, you know, my study of stoicism. It's 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 really always about who I'm being and how I'm being. Mm. So in my own view, it's the goal is, you know, is really not the goal is the goal, but it's who you have to become to achieve the goal. That's the goal. Nice. Yeah. Because, you know, the, the goal is going to come and go. You know, if, if the goal is to make a million bucks, really – it's who do you have to become to make that million dollars? Who do you have to become to show up and generate that kind of cash? Mm. The million dollars will come and go. And then it's on to whatever is next. And then who do you have to become to do that? Yeah. So when you talk about yourself having the impact, I'm always looking at who do I have to show up as? What do I have to study? How do I have to lead to be able to have a J go, Patrick? What you just did, what you just said, what you just, you know, what you just shared. This is what inspired me. And gosh, that was cool. Thank you. So it's really about who I had to become in order to get you inspired to achieve your goal. So that's my scorecard. Yeah. That's, that's now awesome. We, yeah. yeah. And now, and now we want to do that. You know, we want to do that. I mean, gosh, we just want to keep doing that. We want to do, have a huge impact on, on many, many people's lives. For sure. And and for people um, that are listening to this, they're watching this, um, make sure to go to Rain Canada, um, uh, raincanada.com to look at some of their future events. And, and, and I know they have an online kind of portal as well. Um, and if you get a chance to, to learn from these individuals, I mean, it, it's, it's an absolute, um, absolute must. So especially if you have any level of interest in, in real estate investing. Um, 
Patrick, I, I love I love that framework that you, that you just shared. And uh, you know, one of the things I wrote down actually, because I, I was at Acre listening to, I knew that we were gonna you know hop on to this at, at some point. Um, but one of the quotes that you shared, I, I think it was just like a, a quick slide, um, but it was something that you said right at the end. You said, "Dream big and, and do it one step at a time." Right. Um, so for people that are interested, you know, we've got I, I've. I haven't necessarily ever created something that we talked specifically around real estate investing or like necessarily the how to's. I think you guys are definitely more so the experts uh, in that department for someone who's interested, for someone who says, Hey, you know what? That sounds like something I have capital setting aside, or, or maybe I'm just starting out and, and, and I want to get into real estate investing. What's kind of like that, that, that first step outside of maybe going to you know one of your events or or, or, or getting one of Don Campbell's books or, or what have you what's kind of like that that first step do you think that people could, could could start taking well you know first and you know back to that quote the quote was actually dream big think small and the reason the reason that we uh, that I use that particular quote to the education first step is that we can dream big that's great mm-hmm. what, what that will do is overwhelm people it'll make it unattainable right. you know uh, Many years ago, I learned that lesson really clearly, with, you know, believe it or not, in yoga. And I was really upset because I was very competitive in, in yoga. I mean, I don't know how you get competitive in yoga. <laughs> that was great. And I was, I was training at the time. Uh, you know, I was doing yoga at the time with a lady by the name of Lorianne Munzer, who was a gold medal winner in cycling for Canada. And it was just her and I in this yoga class. Okay. So we're doing yoga. <clears throat> excuse me. We're doing yoga, and I'm actually comparing myself to her. You know, here's a world-class athlete. You know, yeah. she's you know, 20 years younger than I am. But anyways, so my instructor once said to me, he said, Patrick, he said, don't look at the top of the mountain. Mm. Just look at what you can do and just ne- look at the next step. He says, if you look at the top of the mountain, you'll never get there. Right. Just take the next step. Now, that back then was profound as it is, you know, today it's, I realize that that's a pretty common thought process for, for really successful people. So if you're getting into real estate, it really is can be very, very overwhelming. Yeah. Uh, back to raincanada.com, our website, we've got so much information on there. And it really is about knowledge. And But if, if there's also the phrase that if, if more knowledge was the answer, we'd all be billionaires with six packs. <laughs> yeah. The re- reality of it is, is that it isn't just about knowledge. It's about how do we take action. And people don't know where to start. Mm. The first the first place to start is to look at, see what what it is you want to do. What is the next small step you can take? We have RAIN members who come to an Acre event. They go, gosh, I want to buy 100 doors. I go, great. That's a great goal. Let's just focus on the next one. Hmm. What are you going to do to buy the next property, your first property, your next property? Hmm. And that's really what it was. Think big, 100, great, awesome. Let's just think about the next one. Hmm. And tell me about, and then tell me when you achieve that. Because there's, there's all the processes and all the steps that you have to go through to buy that first property. Yeah. You have to get organized. You have to get a realtor. You have to start to build your team. You have to get a property manager. You have to get financing. Yeah. Gosh, that whole list of things to do can be overwhelming, and you're only buying one. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's true. I mean, that's, uh, it's like the same uh, analogy. People are like, is it? Like now I'm thinking about, I don't even know if this is right, but it's like, how do you eat or how do you like run a marathon? It's like one step at a time, right? Or how do you sure, eat an this. elephant one bite, one at, bite a time, at a time, right? Sure, it's all the same. So it's it's really breaking that down and I highly encourage people that are listening, watching this to at least, you know, check it out. Um, if they have some interest, like to take those mini actions to do things one thing at a time um, and so that they could be an everyday millionaire down the line and, and then they can build up to that. Um so Patrick, I, I I love loved you know just you know chatting with you around some of your successes, but also just kind of like the mindset and 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 how to break these things down. Um, for for you, we've kind of talked about it, but the theme of the show is is legacy over currency. Um, what do you think, like for leaders and entrepreneurs out there, for high performers that are looking to build a greater legacy? Um, do, do you think real estate investing is, is one thing that they, they should consider? How do you think it adds to kind of their whole aspect of, of viewing their legacy? Well, you, I think the first thing to do that people have to define what their legacy is and what does it mean to them? What does legacy mean to them? Yeah. I, you know, I've, dealt, I've, I've worked with and talked to 
a number of investors, for example, that will have two, three, five, seven, ten million dollars to invest in real estate. And I go, well, what's your exit strategy? And they go, I'm not exiting. This is this is my legacy. This is for my kids. Mm. This is for my grandchildren, my great grandchildren, yeah. and that's how they think. So I was once uh, I did a lot of work by with a guy by the name of Dr. John D. Martini. Yes. And, and, over the years and, and love John's work and it's a body of work that I'm, I'm always drawn to and I go back to and and John D. Martini, Dr. D. Martini once asked the question, what do you want them to be saying about you in a hundred years from now? What do you want them to be saying about you in a thousand years? So when we think about legacy and you think about it in those terms, you have to look and say, well, what does legacy mean to me? Does it mean that I'm creating wealth for my future family, my 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 kids, my grandkids? Does it mean that I'm having an impact in the world today that leaves a legacy that people talk about mm. and that they relate to and they go, gosh, you know, you know, imagine what Jay was thinking back in 2018 and we're now, you know, the year 3000 or the year 2500. Yeah. You go, wow, what a leader. I mean, either you look at the, the, the conversations around a Kennedy or a Martin Luther King, and those are giants. And think about the legacy that they left. So that's all to say that in the in the context of legacy, it doesn't always represent for me wealth, although it likely would have a component of it. Mm. But it really is the legacy for me that I want to leave is what is the impact that I'm left that I leave the world. Who am I to the the friends, the family? the people in my life. And and that's and that's powerful, right? And and I love that, you know, it's simple, right? Just to get clear on it, you know, just to do things one thing at a time. Um but uh, we say it all the time on the show, right? Common sense is not common practice, you know. And uh, I mean, I, I think that's that's a huge huge um, you know, idea there for for people. Um so you know, as we wrap up here, I have a couple last questions for you. But before we jump into them, I'm curious if people wanted to kind of follow you and and socially stalk you online. Is, is there a place that, that that they can go to? I mean, obviously the the Everyday uh, Millionaire podcast. I mean, if you're listening to this show already, uh, definitely go check that out because Patrick's some amazing interviews on there. Any, anything else, Patrick? You know, I'm not a I'm not a big social media guy to be honest with you. The Everyday okay. Millionaire is the everyday millionaire.ca I have my I have my Facebook page and I don't do a lot with it to be honest with you once again is is I'm kind of a face to face person more than I am a social media person yeah. and uh, and maybe I'll grow my social media if it's one of those things that are on my list of to do's sure but sure. Uh, I'm, I'm not there yet so I don't have that interactivity online with people too much cool Cool. Well, I mean, there's tons of amazing interviews and resources on the podcast. So do highly encourage people to go check that out. Um, but uh, second last question we have, um, you know, the name of the show is called The Inner Changemaker. Um, what comes to mind for, for Patrick? Uh, like what, what comes to mind and what kind of words or images uh, when you hear the word changemaker? Well, you know, it's interesting. For, for me, changemaker goes back to what we really hit on a couple of times in this particular interview is what is the impact you're having on the world? But it always comes from who are you being in the context of your life. Yeah. And, you know, the body of work I do is defining yourself always. We, we are not the way we are. You were, you know, we, we choose to be the way we are and who are you choosing to be? And so for me, change maker is about when we change ourselves, that is really we emulate, we ripple up, we have the energy that expands beyond us. So who are you being in the context of your life? And and whatever you've got going on in your life is always 100%. Uh, I'll, I'll, I would stand on the soapbox to, to, because I believe in it so much. Whatever you've got going on in your life, the people in your life is just a reflection of who you're being. So if you don't like the people in your life or if you don't like the you know, bad luck you're having, then you got to really look and take responsibility and hold yourself accountable for who you're being. That's, you know, that's how I look at the world. Yeah. So change maker to me is always about when you change and create a powerful context for who you're being in your life, that creates change. And, and Patrick, that, that's that's really powerful. And I want to take a few seconds just to commend you um, for being a change maker in your own right, for creating that context for, for people in your family and, 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 and the tons of people that you guys have 
you know, had an impact to, to work with. Um, we have never done this before, but as a last question, and I know you mentioned it already a couple, you know, there's a couple of things that would definitely qualify, but, um, as a last question, I'm, I'm curious, just because I want people to interact with us and, and, and create some engagement, not just on your podcast, but also on the show. Is there kind of like a question of the day or a question of the week that maybe you can pose to our listeners and our viewers to, to really challenge them, you know, from, from this interview? That's an interesting question. You know, there's an exercise that I think is really powerful. It's, I've, I've mentioned a couple, even when we're talking about legacy, yeah. you know, there's a, there's an exercise that I was asked to do many years ago. And I, and I think it's, I don't want to say it's commonplace, but I, I think, you know, many people have suggested it. You want to create legacy. You want to define yourself. What you do is sit down one day and this will sound a little weird, but you, you write your own eulogy and mm. you sit there and you picture yourself and you go, okay, if somebody's standing there talking to the audience, and I've passed on. What do I want them to be saying? What do I want them to be saying about me? Who was I in the community? Who was I as a father, as a husband? And who was I in business? Who was I to the world? So as you write your own eulogy, it's really starting to then set a standard, set the bar, set the context for who you're going to be in your life. And it's a really powerful exercise to do. Uh, I've done it many times in a, you know, or several times in workshops that I've that I've held, yeah. And you know, it'll often bring people to tears. It's, I mean, it, it's a, uh, it's a scary exercise too, you know, um, because sure. you're confronted with, you know, sometimes the truth, and sometimes you don't like the truth. Right. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll pose that as the challenge. So if you're listening to this and you're watching this, you got any great value or a tidbit or a takeaway, we'd love for you to engage with us. Um, we'd love for you to, to let us know or you let me know via social. Um, but if you do this exercise, definitely, definitely circle back to us because I know Patrick would be excited and, and I'd also be excited just to know uh, the impact that it's had um, on your life or just going through it and some of the takeaways that for, for you. Um, so I just I'll just interrupt what you go back to the how do people interact with me? I do have a, an email that is looked after by my team. Just CEO perfect. at RainCanada.com. It's CEO at R-E-I-N Canada.com. My team looks after that one. I respond to all emails, by the way, and uh, and I have fun doing that. So that's a way for people to interact if they wanted to do that. Amazing. Amazing. So we'll link everything in the show notes and under this video as well, uh, just just so people can can get access to that. Um, but, uh, you know, Patrick, thank you so much for your time, your wisdom, coming on here, sharing some of your perspectives um, and, and giving us a way to kind of think about not just our legacy, but uh, getting started, you know, in, in, in building wealth and, and, and building our real estate. Um, so uh, thank you. Thank you. And for those of you that are still viewing and, and, and listening to this, um, please let us know. Go through the exercise. Um, and we can't wait to see you uh, on the next episode. Thank you so much, guys. All right. Thanks.